Ella was busy working on with her laptop. She was uploading the videos she took from the wedding and going to edit it when she saw a video that she wasn't aware of taking. Ella looked at it and it was Felicity, talking with someone over her phone. This marriage is only a one-year contract. Purely business, Lewis already signed a contract and agreed with all my terms, Felicity said on the video. And after that, the video cut off. Ella was stunned at what she discovered, and this is a pretty huge scoop to cover, knowing that her boss wants her to find a scoop to cover, something that can blow people's mind. This will be it. But Felicity was her friend, not a close one, but her friend. What are you looking? <laughs> Clark arrived. He was holding two sandwiches on his hand. One for him and the other is for Ella. Ella immediately closed her laptop, not wanting Clark to see it. Nothing. Let's just eat. Ella get the sandwich on Clark's hand. Ah, uh, do you always let me look at everything you edit? He munched on the bread. I am not editing. I am doing my daily journal. Ever heard you write something like that before? Clark shrugged. Of course you won't. We're close. Because we're partners, but we're not that close. Whatever. Um... Ella rolled her eyes as she continues to eat her sandwich. When Clark fell silent, she was thinking. She thought about the things she needs to do should she expose Felicity. At the villa, Felicity was already getting ready for work. She was wearing a white pencil-cut dress that's above the length was above the knees. She also wears her makeup, and when she was about to zip the dress, she couldn't do it. Lewis, could you please help me zip my dress? She called, but no one was answering. Lewis! She called again. This time, Felicity turned around and looked for Lewis. He was not at the balcony of their room, nor the bathroom, so she went to the dressing room and saw him there. She smiled and was about to enter the room, but she heard him calling to someone over the phone. It was on speakers because Lewis was still putting on his shirt. Yes. For the next few days, I will be in night shift. But you're a surgeon. You shouldn't be at the hospital after five, right? The other guy asked. I have a research. Working hard doesn't seem to fit you, Lambert. The other guy laughed. Shut up. I love my work. You know that. Let's just meet some other time... Do I have a choice? The other one laughed. All right then, see you when I see you. He ended the call. Felicity didn't bother to call him after that phone call and just tried her very best to zip the dress on her own. When she was done, she went to their dining and Lewis was already there, sipping on his coffee. Felicity sat down at the bar counter next to Lewis and he handed her the other cup that he made. Thanks. Thanks? Felicity mumbled. Lewis just smiled and they started eating silently. Oh, I almost forgot. I might get home late tonight. Really? Felicity pretended that she didn't overheard him. Yes, I got approved at the German Research Institute, and they're expecting me to submit something before the end of this month. That's great, though. I'll just tell the helpers to cook for you, then. Lewis looked at her. It seems like Felicity doesn't have interest in what he said, but instead of making it an issue, he brushed it off and finishes his food. Felicity did the same as well, and when they're finished, they both got out of the villa and into the parking lot. Felicity's car was bummed you while Lewis was a Toyota, see you, Lewis said before he got into his own car. Yeah, see you. Felicity mumbled before she got into her own car. When Lewis got out of the gate, Felicity followed. Today is a very busy day for her because they'll be sorting the materials they're going to use with Infinite. She has a lot of meetings to attend for Infinite and with the Fannings business. She has a photo shoot for her own brand. Lewis got into the hospital and he immediately went to his clinic. He wore his white coat and started to look at his patient's chart so that he could start paying them a visit. Lewis has a total of 10 patients to be visit and an operation later at 3, a removal of appendix. Good morning. He greeted to one of his patients when he went to visit her in her room. Good morning, Dr. Lambert. Lewis looked at her chart. Do you have any funny feeling in the operation area? He put the stethoscope on her back. Could you please take a deep breath for me? The patient did as what he said, and when he was done, Lewis scribbled on his chart. Any funny feeling? He asked again, smiling. Oh no, Doc. I am very much fine. That's a pretty good sign. Maybe tomorrow you can be discharged? That's great. Thank you. The patient smiled. Lewis then went to the other patient's room. This patient was dear to him because he was one courageous little grill. She lost both of her legs because of cancer, and now she's having chemotherapy at the age of five. Little Lucy 
High five. The kid slapped his hand before he giggled. I will be looking at your wound, okay? You might get a little uncomfortable. It's okay, Doc. I'm strong. I can handle anything. His mother smiled and kissed her at the top of her head. That's a good grill. A strong, good grill. Lewis opened the bandage on her leg. Lewis smiled and put back the bandage. The wound is healing as it should be, but I still want to look closely for at least a week. Can you still endure the hospital food, little girl? He looked at the kid's mother before he dropped his gaze to Lucy. A little more, yes. She smiled. Lewis chuckled before he muffled his hair. Can I speak to you, mommy? He called his mother. I have to say, Lucy has a slight pneumonia. That's why I need to look closely at her. She's slightly feverish, too. Lucy already had a lot of painful medications when can this be stopped? My poor girl. Lucas needs your strength more than ever if you break down in front of her. She might lose hope as well. He held her hand. I'm going to do everything to save her life. Just have a little faith in your daughter because she is fighting. Lucas's mother nodded her head. Thank you. Thank you. I will give you the medicine he needs for his pneumonia. Lewis took out his pad. Here. He handed the paper. My husband still hasn't come back. I can't leave Lucy alone. I'll just buy the medicine when he comes back. Lewis looked at his watch. It's still early. I can still look after her. You can go and buy her medicine so she could have it immediately. Thank you, Doctor. Lucy, Mommy will buy your medicine. She'll be back immediately. I will be the one to look after you for the meantime. Is it okay? Lewis looked at the kid. Not a problem? Lucy said in a small voice. You can go now. Lewis told Lewis's mother. Lewis isn't just a doctor for his patients. He became their friend and companion. That's why he is loved by everyone in the hospital. After visiting his patients, Lewis will accept consultations for an hour or two before he'll prepare for the operation. He has a very busy day, but this kind of detour isn't a problem for him. Finn was waiting for Felicity at the lobby so they could go to Mr. Fanning's office together. He was asked to get a file for Felicity's father and gave it to him for review since he doesn't want to go to the office. When they both got into the elevator, Ella sneaked in. In her hand is a recording pen with the phone call Felicity had the day of the wedding. She was plans to blackmail Felicity and make her tell the truth. She needs to do this because it's what her boss says. He wanted a huge scoop, then she'll give her one. On her way there, she was looking at the pen and wasn't paying attention to the guy who was running, and then they bumped. Finn? Finn? Felicity shouted at the background. Ella was hovering over him, and she even kissed him on the cheek because of the fall. Upon realizing it, Ella immediately stood up. Felicity helped Finn to stand up as well. I'm so sorry. Felicity looked at her, and she recognized her immediately. She wanted to greet Ella, but Finn found a pen beside his shoes, and when he bent to get it, he heard Felicity's voice. A recording pen? He asked, looking at Ella before he looked at Felicity. After she realizes it, Felicity took the pen away from him. Ella was nowhere to be found. She ran fast as she could, and she never looked back. She was too scared to even look at Felicity. Felicity looked around. I'll just give this to her later. All right. Felicity put the pen to her bag before they proceed to the elevator. Finn still needs the documents before she'll go to her office. They went to the top floor where her office is. Beside it is her father's Finn took the key out of his pouch and then opened the door. After he got the files, he went out and walked Felicity to her office. James was already there. Finn, Finn. James greeted after seeing him. You're too loyal, James. He joked, he joked. James was just like him. The Fanning family was the one who helped him graduate. But instead of venturing of his own, he decided to help Felicity do her work. Indeed I am. Felicity give me good compensation. He joked back. Felicity smiled before she shook her head. I think you better go and give that to Dad Finn. He's already waiting for you. Of course, goodbye Felicity. You too, James. It's nice to see you again. He looked at James. It's nice to see you too as well. James said before Finn finally got out of Felicity's office. After Finn finally closes the door, Felicity looked at James before she took out the pen she discovered from Ella. Felicity played it, and when it's done, James leaned into his chair. Media, media. He commented, shaking his head. They will be your friend in front of them, and then they're going to do nasty things to you if you turn your back on them. 
I guess she's going to make you confirm the audio recording. James looked at Felicity. You think so? That's why she's here. Felicity felt betrayed. But this is a business world. It's where everyone will attack you no matter how good you are to them. What are you planning to do about it then? I want to confront her, but she seems too promising to her work. Even do beyond the belt things, just get that scoop. Yeah, you better talk to her about this first. I'm pretty sure she's going to look for this pen. Yup, she lost it when Finn and her bumped. I guess she sneaked into the company. Just like what she did to your wedding. James shook his head. I'll settle this later. What's my schedule for today? James looked at his tablet and he sent Felicity her schedule. First, she has a meeting at the production, then she has to go to the studio for the official photo shoot of Infinite. The model is Linda's little angel. Felicity prepared her things and told James that they have to go to the warehouse for the meeting. Good morning, everyone. Felicity greeted. The moment she arrived at the warehouse, everyone was already there waiting for her. We'll start the meeting by a simple presentation about what is Infinite all about, because I don't want any of you to ask, or want any of you to ask, or wonder why Infinite became a brand. James, please play the video. James played the short video why Felicity named it Infinite, and how the idea started and how it became a real brand, and why they are here that day. After the short presentation, everyone clapped their hands. The lights were turned on, and Felicity went back at the front part of the room. Infinite will start to operate really soon, and I want this team to work hard to meet the things that are needed. We will create baby products, so the materials that should be used must be handpicked by yours truly, and I need this team to look closely for any faults of the materials. This team is the most important part of production, because you will use your use your eyes to look at the products for any defects before packing it. She paused. She paused. The meeting went on, and she also offered them high commission for every hundred box they make every day, and everyone cheered. Felicity already have market from local malls, and her aunt also supports her new business. So she ordered a hundred box of wipes and diaper to display on her grocery store at their place. Infinite will be producing baby wipes, diapers, shampoo, and soap for babies. That's why Felicity is really hands-on for this, because it's the baby's life they're talking about. And if the babies will get a rush or something, it'll be their fault. But so far, no babies had a rush from the diaper and wipes they already distributed. Felicity made sure that her workers will be the one to use the products first, so that they can have a track of who needs to be tend if they accidentally had a rush. Ella waited outside the company, and when she saw her on her car going somewhere, she immediately went to the entrance. But this time, there's already a security guard standing there. Excuse me. May I know if you have business inside? Ella looked at where she bumped at Finn. Mm -hmm. I don't, but I'll be fast. I dropped something earlier today and I have to retrieve it. I am sorry, ma'am, but I cannot do that. You need a pass from someone who is working here for you to get in. But I'll just be very fast. You can even look at me. She pleaded. No, I'm sorry. You can set an appointment if you want to go in aside before she walked away. She has to get that pen because it holds her career. After a very long day of work, Felicity finally got the time to call Ella. Felicity just told her that they have to meet urgently and she didn't say anything further than that. Ella was hesitant, but still she went to the coffee shop Felicity told her to go. When she got there, Felicity was already waiting for her at the table near the window. She was sitting gracefully and she was sipping her tea. Ella couldn't help but to feel intimidated after seeing her. She was even that it's better to leave than to go to her. But Felicity wanted something from her and she might benefit from it, so she pulled herself together and slowly walked towards her table. Good afternoon, Miss Fanning. Oh, Ella, thank you for seeing me. Please take a seat. Ella nodded before she sat down when Felicity saw that Ella already settled into her seat. She took out the recording pen. Ella was shocked after seeing it. Is this yours? Felicity asked calmly. Yes. I hear what was in that recording and destroyed it already. Ella felt really embarrassed right now. She was thinking that if only the soil will crack open and just swallow her whole will be a better idea than being caught red-handed by the person she's about to write a scandal with. Ella tried to divert her gaze and saw the advertisement for Infinite at some electronic billboard and huff. Your advertisement sucks. If only those babies smiled during the shoot, it'll be more catchy. People tend to smile every time infants smile. That's how you catch your market. She looked at Felicity. 
Felicity already knew that Ella was embarrassed because she fell silent, even diverted her gaze to another place. She also knew that Ella already wished to leave, but she kept quiet and looked at her reaction. She couldn't help but to laugh at her silly actions. Why don't you work for my company then? If you think that it really needs to be changed, I will let you decide. You will be the head of my planning department. Ella looked at her. She was thinking she was just quiet. You can showcase your talent to my company, and I will make sure that in every advertisement you make, you will be credited. What's the catch? All you have to do is to delete all the things you recorded from the wedding that can stain my name. Ella looked at her. The offer is tempting, but what about her wage? Is it competitive as what she's receiving from her current work? What about my payment? The company will give you compensation on every successful advertisement you make, and I will triple your salary because I believe in your talent, so don't waste it. Come to think about this, if you leak that recording, I will hunt you down and your career will be over because I won't stop until you get what you deserve and if you do the latter and work for me instead. You will gain everything that you deserve, no nagging boss, no quota, no hassle, just a relaxing work environment. Ella fell silent again, but as she was about to answer Felicity, her phone rang and when she looked at it, it was her boss. Ella answered without hesitation. She was scared of her boss because he might fire her if she won't answer him immediately, so even though Felicity was still there, she has no choice but to answer it. Ella, for Pete's sake, where the hell are you? You said you'd report after lunch, but it's already four in the afternoon. Where's that scoop I asked you about? Do you really want to get fired for not reporting directly? He shouted from the other line. Felicity heard it and took Ella's phone from her. This is Felicity Fanning, and Ella's going to resign. She looked at the bewildered Ella. She will submit a resignation letter first thing tomorrow. Felicity gave Ella her phone back before she stood up. It's your call, Ella. I will be waiting for you at the company. If you decided, go to my office with your portfolio and resume, and I will endorse you immediately to the planning team so you can start immediately. She turned her back on Ella and walked away. After Felicity got out of the coffee shop, she looked at her phone, and the call was still there. She put the phone to her ear. I will send my resignation tomorrow. Please don't call me anymore. Thank you. She ended the call. Felicity smiled before she got into her BMW and drove off. She was happy because she won and closed a deal again. This time, her secret was safe. On her way, Felicity called James and told him the news. James was happy for her because she immediately had a solution to her problem and now they doesn't have to worry about anything in all. When she got home, the villa was pretty empty. The helpers were about to go, but Felicity stops them. Could you at least stay a little longer? Lewis can't go home early. He'll be late or maybe he won't come home. The helpers nodded and agreed that they'd stay for the night. Felicity decided to go for a swim to take all her stress away. Even though it's cold, their swimming pool is heated so it's okay for her to swim since the water is pretty warm. Felicity did a couple of laps before she decided to get out of the water. She put on her bathrobe and went to the kitchen where the helpers arranged the table for her to eat. Thank you, she uttered before she started eating. After finishing her dinner, she went to their room and took a shower before she dressed into her nightgown and went to bed. Felicity took a glance on her phone but got dismayed because there was not a single text from Lewis. She sighed before she put her phone at the bedside table and covered herself with the blanket. After a while of thinking, Felicity drifted to sleep. At the hospital, Lewis couldn't concentrate with his work because he's always looking at his phone, waiting for Felicity to send him a message, saying that she's already home or something, but every time he looks at it, he felt dismay. Moments later, his phone rang and he immediately took it, but to his dismay again. It was just his colleague. Lewis answered it. What do you want? He asked, a little bit annoyed. It was already nine in the evening and probably Felicity's already home, but she didn't even bother to text him. What happened to you? You sounded like a grumpy old man. His colleague laughed on the other line. I am a bit busy. What do you want? Oh, wow, you're not taking jokes right now. Anyways, there's food here. Do you want me to take it to your office? No, thanks. I'm full. You can have it all to yourself, and I hope you get indigestion. He ended the call and went back to work. Lewis wanted to text her first, but he stopped himself because she might be busy and just ignore his texts, or she'll get disturbed by her phone's notification or something so he waited for her to be the one to text him, but Felicity's already asleep at their house, and he got nothing from her. Lewis took a deep breath and shook Felicity away from his thoughts and started reading the book he needs to study while taking notes. 
Beside him was a microscope and some bacteria that he got from the laboratory to study. I'm sorry, I'm really busy tonight. I can't go home. Lewis said through a phone call with Felicity. The couple was invited by the Fanning family for dinner that night, and after Felicity was informed, she immediately called Lewis. But she got dismayed by his answer. It's already three days since she last saw him at their house because he was busy with his research. The hospital became his son, and somehow, Felicity missed his presence. That night, Felicity went to the gathering alone. All of them were present, even her, her father. Felicity, where's your husband? Oh, he's working on his research. She handed the cake she brought to the helper, who was busy setting the table. Does he always work late? Instead of answering, Felicity kept quiet. Ah, how can we have grandchildren if you guys won't be together every night? Your father and I are already expecting a cute grandchild from you. Shh, looked at Felicity. Felicity looked at her. She thought the topic was already dropped because she already answered it before, but she was wrong. Mrs. Fanning even let her father hear the topic. He's a married man. He should know his obligations. Mr. Fanning commented. Thankfully, Finn saw her distress and helped her distract the couple by changing the topic into his plan of staying. That'll be a good choice. I just hope Felicity here also comes to her senses that her husband should be doing his duty as her partner and don't drown himself from work because the lineage of the Fanning family should go on. Felicity's not getting any younger. Mrs. Fanning looked at Felicity. Finn shook his head before looking at Felicity and mouthed sorry. Felicity just gave him a small smile. The dinner was short. They didn't even gave time to make a conversation during the meal, and after they all decided to go. Felicity stayed with Finn, and they decided to talk a little while more. I'm really glad you're not a fanning, Finn. I mean, all of this pressure. She shook her head. There's nothing wrong about being a fanning. The only thing that's wrong is that the old fannings still believe at the old way of living, whereas it's already 21st century. Felicity agreed. Finn was right. They were stuck with their own timeline and they don't look at the way the world evolve. After the talk, Felicity decided to go home. The house was already empty. The helpers already went home and the only thing that was left for her is the beautiful scenery of Los Angeles' city lights shining. She sat down at the gazebo and opened a bottle of wine while looking at her phone. Until now, she doesn't have the courage to ask Lewis how was he doing at the hospital. She was just waiting for him to text her, and every time, she ends up feeling dismayed. Her night ended up with an empty bottle of wine and empty bed because she fell asleep at the gazebo. The next morning, she went into the house to get ready for work. She didn't even prepare something for breakfast and just drove off. When she got to the company, James bought her breakfast and they ate it together before her day started. At the hospital, Lewis was taking a shower at his clinic. For three nights, his clinic became his home. After taking a shower, he went out and went to his desk. Peter showed up with his breakfast while he was putting Lewis's breakfast at his table. Peter saw Lewis taking off his diamond ring. Why are you taking it off? The food you brought is oily, and if I get oil in my hand, it might slip away and tend to lose it, so I won't waste any chances. He opened the tub of food. Peter nodded before he sat down across Lewis. How is your marriage, anyways? He asked, while munching on sandwich he bought. Good. Good. Does your wife even approve you sleeping here instead at your house? Lewis looked at his phone. I guess so. He was expecting Felicity to call or even text him, but for the past few days, his phone was silent. They hurried eating and cleaned the clinic before they opened for consultation. They really had a busy day when Emma barged into his clinic without any appointments. Emma? How may I help you? My father says he's not feeling very well. He's at the ER. Lewis looked at Peter. I'll call the ER to get some tests, and after this, I will immediately go to the ER you. Emma nodded. We'll wait for you then. She went back to the ER. Before what happened, Emma was making some comments about Felicity's wedding when her father felt an excruciating pain from his lower right side of his belly. He's been feeling like this for a couple of days now, but he didn't bother to check it because it was still bearable. Not until the day before he was rushed to the hospital. The pain became sharp and it doesn't go away anymore. Until the day he decided that he couldn't take it anymore. That's why Emma rushed him at the hospital immediately. Lewis called to take blood tests and urinary tests from Emma's father. And then after his clinic, he went to the ER to check him. May I know where is the exact pain located? 
Emma's father couldn't talk anymore and he just pointed the area where he was feeling the pain. Lewis tried to touch it, but he flinched in pain. Dr. Lambert, the tests are here, the nurse said before handing him the papers. I am right. What happened to my dad? I am suspecting that his appendix already ruptured and according to the tests, his blood has toxins. Your father needs an emergency operation? What, immediately? Yes, we have to take the ruptured appendix out and clean the area before it caused further damage. Okay. Emma looked at her father. There's no time to waste. Lewis called for a nurse. Go prepare the operating room. We need to conduct an emergency surgery. The nurse nodded before he ran out of the ER. You can go to the admitting and prepare a suite. You can also wait there once it's done. All right. Lewis pushes the stretcher with the nurses, and they brought Emma's father to the operating room while Emma went to pay for everything. Later that night, Felicity's father came to Felicity's house unannounced. Where is Lewis? He asked after he got into Felicity's house. He won't come home. He's at the hospital. He asked after he got into Felicity's house. Felicity and the helpers prepared the food her father brought. Even though her father's a little bit nagger, Felicity's still happy. Well, at least she got someone to eat with that night. Is he always doing this? He's really busy for his research. That's why he doesn't come home. There's a deadline for it at the end of the month. That's why he needs more time to do it. He has a house, a wife that's waiting for him. Why don't he work here? The hospital's more accessible, Dad. It has the equipments he needs for his research. Mr. Fanning fell silent. The dining area was silent when the door suddenly swung open with Lewis getting into the house. Lewis, come eat. I thought you're not coming home tonight. Lewis looked at Felicity before he went to them. Good evening, Mr. Fanning. I just went home to get some clothes. I will be going back to the hospital. Yes, Dad. Lewis is busy. Lewis looked at her. At least join us for dinner, then. I would love to, Mr. Fanning, but I have a lot of things going on at the hospital, and I have an IQ patient that I really need to monitor. Let him go, Dad. It's okay. Please continue eating, Lewis said before he turned his back at them and went to their bedroom. Mr. Fanning looked at his daughter before he shook his head. Felicity saw this, and she knew that he will say something after Lewis will go. I'd be heading back to the hospital, Mr. Fanning. He looked at Felicity. Felicity, have a good evening. Bye. Okay, okay. Felicity answered without looking at him. Lewis plastered a sad smile before he leave the house. After Felicity heard Lewis's car drove away, she couldn't help but to be sad. She thought that he'd come home and stay for the night, but she was wrong. You need to end this endless chase between the two of you, Felicity. Mr. Fanning said after she walked him to the front door. Lewis said before he turned his back at them and went to their bedroom. His driver was already waiting for him and so does his personal bodyguard. Felicity kept quiet and just waved her father goodbye before she went back inside. She looked at her watch and saw that it's still early, so she went to take a short swim, but still her mind was elsewhere. So she took a shower and dressed up. Felicity decided to pay Lewis a visit that night. She'll look at what he's working with. Felicity smiled before she got into her car and drove off. When she got to the hospital, she was greeted by the people who knew her. She went to Lewis's floor, where his office is, and saw Emma. Her brows furrowed. Look who's here? Emma went to Felicity. Fancy seeing you here. What are you doing here? My Felicity, this is a hospital, might as well thought about it. Felicity rolled her eyes. I know this is a hospital, Emma. My question is, what's your business here? Emma chucked. My father had an emergency operation because his appendix ruptured and Lewis was his doctor. Felicity nodded and was about to go, but Emma didn't stop talking. You know Lewis was very kind. He immediately arranged the operation himself. Felicity looked at her with a smug look. Good for you then. Now excuse me because I'm going to my husband. Husband? I thought you two already got divorced. Felicity turned to her. And what makes you think of it? Well, Lewis doesn't have a ring on his finger and no one's talking about your marriage here. So I thought Lewis made his senses and divorced you. But I guess he still doesn't... She smiled. When she got to the hospital, she was greeted by the people who knew her. She went to Lewis's floor, where his office is, and saw Emma. A doctor passed by which knew Emma and greeted her. Looking for Dr. Lambert? Emma looked at Felicity before answering him. 
Nope, I'm just passing by. She answered sweetly. Oh, okay, I thought you were looking for your special family member. Emma laughed sweetly. No, I was just walking around. The doctor said something which made Emma laugh more before he bid goodbye. Felicity doesn't even know why she looked at the conversation. It just made her more uncomfortable. See that? Everyone doesn't know you existed, Felicity. Emma laughed after the doctor walked away. Felicity shook her head. She didn't answer to her and just started walking away. She went to Lewis's office and tried knocking on the door, but no one's answering. When she tried to turn the doorknob, it opened, so she went in. The clinic was quite dark. The only light that was on was in his office. She went in there and saw a heart cake shape on his table. Felicity held on the paper bag she was holding, thinking that visiting Lewis was a bad idea. I thought you are looking after your dad. Felicity turned her back and saw Lewis. Lewis was shocked as well. He thought it was Emma who was pestering her. Felicity, what are you doing here? I don't even know why I'm here. She gripped on the paper bag. Lewis saw the paper bag and his brows furrowed. Is that food? Felicity looked at what she was holding. Supposed to give you this, but I think you don't need it. She looked at the cake on his table. Emma gave it to me. It was just a token of appreciation for saving her father's life. I see. She was about to leave, but Lewis stopped her. Why don't you give it to me then? Felicity's anger bursts, and she threw the paper bag to him. No one knew about me, she said in her gritted teeth. Lewis' brows furrowed. He was confused on what she was talking about. But everyone knew about your special family member. It's already clear to me, Lewis. Felicity, stop. What are you even talking about? I am working here for Pete's sake. Working, Lewis. Working with another woman, I guess. What the hell, Felicity? Emma thought you were already divorced because you don't wear our ring anymore. My God, that's the only thing bothering you. Me not wearing our wedding ring? He asked before he ran his hand through his hair. I don't even know if it's the right thing to wear it in the first place. Felicity looked at him in disbelief. Of course you are. She walked out. After Lewis realizes what he said, he tried to follow her. But Felicity ran, her tears started falling, and all she had in mind is that she wanted to get out of that dreadful place. It was Ella's first day to work on the fanning group. She was wearing a formal attire with a pencil-cut skirt and black high heels, like a real office person. But she was walking awkwardly because she's not used to this. She was a field reporter, which means she wore sneakers than high heels. That's why she's really uncomfortable. Ella was busy trying to stay her balance when Finn suddenly showed up making her bump into him again, spilling the cup of coffee Finn was holding. I am so sorry. Finn was about to open his mouth, but he was cut off when Felicity passes by and saw Ella. Ella, congratulations on your first day of work. Please come to my office. Ella followed Felicity to her office, and when they got there, she turned to look at Ella. The floor you'll be working is at the ninth. Lee, the supervisor, will assist you. He will be the one to teach you everything, so please listen to him. Okay. Ella answered quietly before Felicity called out for Lee. By the way, there is no dress code here. Just don't forget your company ID. Lee, the supervisor, knocked on the door before he came in. Lee, this is Ella, the new head of the planning department. Show her around her working area. Right away, madam. Please follow me, Ella. Congratulations on your first day again, Ella. Felicity smiled before Ella and Lee finally gets out of her office. They went out of Felicity's office when they saw Finn, busy cleaning the coffee stain on his shirt. Ella wanted to apologize again, but Lee walks fast. They took the elevator and went to the ninth floor where Lee introduced Ella as the new head of the planning department. He gave Ella a tour around the whole floor before they settled down in a huge cubicle where Ella's name was plastered. This will be your place. Ella smiled. Thank you. You'd be working on the advertisement team today for the launching of the new AMS. Fanning will be waiting for the immediate result. I guess you're all good? Yes, so far so good. Ella smiled. Thank you. Lee nodded. By the way, I saw you looking at Finn. I say, you stay away from that man. He said in his gayish tone. Why so? She asked, curious. Lee looked around, and when he saw that no one's listening, he scooted closer to Ella's cubicle. He's no good news for you. Ella's brows furrowed. The Fannings adopted him when he was still young, and some rumor says that he's behind the Fannings' dirty works. Lee looked at Ella's face and noticed that she was confused. He rolled his eyes. Goons. Ella nodded. 
They say he broke up with his fiance 10 years ago and went to Denmark. Really, why? No one really knows why. There are only rumors saying that the Fannings made him do something before and he fled away for his own safety. Lee paused. They say the Fannings even supported his living there. I see that's why he has this strange aura. True, because he's a mysterious man with full of secrets. Ella chuckled. I'm thirsty. Oh, I'll come with you to the water dispenser. Ella stood up and they slowly walked towards the dispenser. They took a cup and fill it with water. So why is he here now? Ella continued the topic about Finn. Lee shrugged his shoulder. Maybe the Fannings wanted something to be done in secret again. That's why Finn is here. He concluded. Lee fell silent before he shivered. Jeez, I can't even imagine what Finn's real identity is. We don't know. Maybe his here for other reasons. Ella shrugged. Either way, you better get out of his way. Try not be noticed by him. Ella thought about it and flinched after remembering that she bumped at Finn twice already, which was the total opposite of what Lee was telling her now. Ella took a sip on her cup when she saw Finn approaching their way. Lee was about to talk, but she stopped him. When Finn finally got closer to them, she signaled Lee to get out and he immediately obliged. She took a deep sigh. Ella was facing the dispenser so she can't see Finn at her back. She doesn't have the courage to turn around so she waited for the room to be silent, and when it did, she turned around. But to her horror, Finn was there. He was standing behind her, and when she turned round, she bumped into him and the cup of water she was holding spilled on him again. Emma was busy doing her thing at the hospital after she saw Felicity stormed out. She plastered a huge smile, thinking that sooner or later the couple will end everything and she'll get the chance for Lewis to finally notice her. That day, Lewis has a scheduled checkup for her father. Emma immediately put on her makeup and curled her hair. When she was ready, she sat down at the sofa near her father's bed, which was facing the door of his hospital room. Moments later, Lewis knocked before he went in. Good morning, Dr. Lewis. She greeted sweetly, but Lewis just gave her a blank look before he headed to her father. Good morning. He greeted to him. Any pain from the operation? No, doctor. Emma's father replied. Lewis nodded before he took his vital signs. Can you please take a deep breath for me? Emma's father inhaled deeply. When it was finished, Lewis hung his stethoscope around his neck. No signs of infection. That's a good sign. Can I see the wound? Emma's father moves slowly so that the wound gets exposed. The wound is healing pretty well. You can go home two to three days from now. He gave him a weak smile. Thank you so much, Dr. Lambert. I if you need anything, please ring the bell. He pointed the button near his bed. Thank you again, Doctor. Lewis was about to turn his back when Emma immediately stood up. Wait, I'm going to show you out. Lewis just gave her a tired look when Emma closes the door behind her. She smiled at Lewis. Hey, thank you so much for everything, Lewis, for helping us. I'm just doing my job, Miss Emma. I pledged for it. Nothing more. Nothing less. He said before he walked away, leaving Emma a little bit dumbfounded. Finn leaves angrily, leaving Ella continuously shaking her head. What the hell, Ella? She said to herself before she run her hand to her face. This is so embarrassing, she said loudly before picking up the cups on the floor and put it on the trash bin. It's three times in a row, and if she's going to bump into him the fourth time, Ella will make sure that the soil will open and eat her alive. She's too clumsy. After she washed her hands, she went back to her cubicle. On her way, she even saw Lee talking to their other collie. She sighed before she opened her computer and registered her ID. After she did it, she went to the company email and checked it. Felicity already sent her some tasks she needs to do, and it was just simple ones. Felicity wanted a design for Infinite, so Ella immediately started working on it. At the hospital, Emma was feeling a little bit sick, so she requested for a doctor's referral, so she went to go to Lewis's office to ask for help, but Peter was the one to greet her when she got there. Lewis is not here. I, I just want to ask, where's room 264? Are you playing tricks on me? I said Lewis is not here, you can go away. I'm at looking for Lewis, Peter. I am looking for a doctor who could help me with this stupid stomach pain. I am feeling, now tell me where I can find a doctor who can help me with this problem. Peter blinked his eyes. He felt really embarrassed. He didn't even saw Emma's facial features. She was awfully pale, yet he disregarded her. Turn left and straight ahead. You can see 
the room number at the top of the door. Emma didn't bother to say thank you to him and just leave. She went to the direction Peter told her to, and thankfully there was no patience that day. So Emma was checked immediately, and she found out that she was acidic. The doctor told her the things she must not eat and drink, and even gave him a list of pills she needs to take. When she was done, her father's secretary helped her go back to her father's room and even bought her medicines. I hope you learn your lesson, her father commented. Emma was getting on a diet, but it was the wrong way. Instead of slimming, Emma gained weight and became acidic. The doctor also told her to stop the diet she was doing because it can make her situation worse. Emma didn't say anything and just sleep at the extra bed for watches. After his meeting, Lewis stayed at the conference room with his colleague, who was very busy showing their honeymoon pictures from Thailand. Lewis was just looking at them the whole time, and when they stopped talking, Lewis leaned forward. He asked him about their honeymoon phase. During that phase, if possible, don't talk about int- uh, work or think anything about work because it's your time together. It's your time to know each other and to be intimate. So why talk about work? He looked at Lewis. Lewis fell silent, thinking about their honeymoon phase, because instead of making more time together, they both went to work immediately, and he even stayed at the hospital. He was too drowned by his jealousy and went caving. The hospital became his cave, and now he hurt Felicity. You can make it work. Um, thanks. Even though his colleague doesn't know a thing about what happened between them, Lewis was still thankful for his advice. Because at least he can make a change and make it up to Felicity. That day, Lewis decided that he'd go home. After his shift, Lewis took his coat and went out of the hospital and drove to Felicity's company. He looked at his watch and it was still three in the afternoon. Felicity works until five, but he doesn't mind waiting for her. He went to the elevator and pressed Felicity's floor button and waited. His heart was racing, but he has to lower down his pride if he wanted things to work out. Lewis knocked on Felicity's office. James was the one who opened the door. Felicity, someone's looking for you. He called out, letting Lewis come in. Felicity stopped typing on her keyboard and looked at the door. When she saw Lewis, she was a bit worried. Is there something wrong? Lewis just shook his head. No, I'm here to wait for you. He scratched the back of his neck. Oh, but I work until five. I know. I'll just wait for you until you finish. But it's still too early. Felicity's brows furrowed. I'll wait, anyways. He smiled. He smiled. Go and continue your work. I'll just sit here and wait for you. He pointed. He pointed the sofa near James's desk. Felicity nodded awkwardly. Okay, if you say so. She went back to her table. She took one last glance of Lewis before she started working again. A few minutes later, Felicity was already drowned by her own thoughts as she was typing on her computer. Felicity's landline suddenly rang, and she answered it immediately. Hello, yes, speaking. Yes, you can deliver it to the warehouse now. My men will take it from there, okay? Thank you. She ended the call. Another few minutes later, the phone rang again. The other truck's already going there. You can go to their house directly. Yes, yes. Felicity was indeed really busy that day. After a little while, Felicity called Ella. I already saw the designs, and I want to pick the last one. The pink in color. Yes, that one. I want it to be the logo in everything as well. Yes, you can send it first thing tomorrow. Felicity said before ending the call. James was busy as well. He was sorting Felicity's schedule for the next few days. He was holding his iPad and at the same time typing to his computer. Louis looked at Felicity and he couldn't help but to be amazed. She was really dedicated at her work. Indeed, she was indeed a hardworking person. It was already near ten in the evening when Felicity finally finishes her work. James went home first after the clock turns five, and Felicity allowed it since his work was already done for the day. Felicity just wanted to finish her presentation for the next day, so she won't have anything else to think of for tomorrow's presentation. Lewis was just there, patiently waiting for her. When she was about to stand up, Lewis stood up as well. You done? Felicity smiled before nodding her head. Yes, but I still have to go to the showroom. I need to look at where I am going to present my product. I can accompany you there if you want. Are you sure? You've been waiting for hours now. Maybe you want to go home first. I waited for you so that we can both go home together. So I will be accompanying you there so that we can both go home together. Felicity nodded. All right. She was the one who walked first while Lewis was following behind her. 
As they walk, Felicity couldn't help but to think about Lewis's gestures. She was really touched by what he did that night, even though Lewis was still quiet about the argument they had the last time they saw each other. Felicity opened the showroom and it was quiet big. It has two huge sofas at each side of the room and a mini stage at the front. Infinite's product sample were already at the long table and it's already properly arranged. The brochures are all stacked up at the side, and Felicity also checked at the projector if it's working. Everything okay? Yes, I just hope this event will be successful tomorrow. Don't worry, it will be... Felicity was about to get her bag at the sofa when the power suddenly turned off. Felicity looked outside and saw that it was her brother, Frank. Frank looked at her and laughed. Felicity slapped her forehead before facing Lewis, who was standing behind her. My half-brother played tricks. Ooh, just wait until I'll get out of here. Felicity looked for her phone, but she couldn't find it anywhere. What the hell? She shouted in frustration when she realized that she left it in her office. Felicity cussed under her breath before she looked at Lewis. Where's your phone? She asked him. I left my bag at my car. He said, embarrassed. Felicity rolled her eyes at him. Then we're hopeless. She sighed before she went to the sofa. Thankfully, the showroom's screened windows were slightly open, making the room a little bit cold. Lewis walked to the sofa as well. I'm sorry, this is not what I thought that would happen tonight. He sat down next to Felicity. Felicity sighed loudly. It's all right, Lewis. It's not your fault that this happened. Both of them fell silent before Lewis broke the silence. I'm sorry? Felicity looked at him awkwardly. She knew what he was talking about, but she was too embarrassed to say anything. Felicity drifted her gaze and saw an empty bottle. Why don't we play truth or dare? She stood up before and went to where the bottle is, and took it. Here. Here. She sat down at the floor. Lewis copied her action, and when they settled in... No lies, okay? Lewis nodded his head. No lies. Felicity spinned the bottle, and it stopped to Lewis's side. Do you like Emma? She asked, looking at Lewis. No, I was just helping her because it was duty, and I pledged for it. Nothing more, nothing less, pure duties. Felicity wanted to ask more, but he might think that she's too keen to know about it, so she let it pass. At least her heart's a little bit relaxed because of what he said. But if Lewis tells her the latter, Felicity doesn't know what she's going to do, or or how to face Lewis after. Deep inside of her, Felicity knew that she was already falling for him, but she's just too scared to admit it. Well, why would she react like that if she doesn't have feelings for him, right? Why would she get hysterical if Lewis is not important to her? Felicity was known to be a strong and confident woman, but every time Lewis is on the topic, she became weak. Lewis spun the bottle this time, and it stopped to him. Felicity chuckled, and she dared him to dance. Lewis was laughing, but he still danced. He spun the bottle again, and this time, it stopped to Felicity. Why did you marry me? Felicity was shocked. Why did I marry you? She asked herself. The question floated at her mind, because she loved him at the first place. Felicity cleared her throat. It's really chilly in here, she commented, before standing up. She wanted to tell him that she wanted to have a family with him, but she kept quiet. She doesn't want to assume, knowing Lewis, he has a kind heart, and maybe he's just making her feel safe whenever he's around. That's why he's treating her like a real lady, and Felicity doesn't want to assume. Lewis looked at her. He was waiting for her answer because if she was the one who asked him that, he would tell her that he loves her. Lewis was hoping that she'd say the same, but she kept quiet and avoided the question instead. Why don't we watch movie instead? Why not? You pick one? Felicity smiled before she connected the laptop to the projector. The main power was turned off, but the emergency power system was still on. Felicity chose a classic movie. It was Forrest Gump. The story was quiet, pretty good, and Felicity even made some comments about some scenes while Lewis was just listening. Jenny's really pretty. Yes, she is, Lewis answered, but he wasn't looking at the screen but to Felicity. If only he's got courage and just tell Felicity how he exactly feels, things wouldn't be awkward between them. Lewis sighed and drowned his self to the movie when he felt his shoulder got a little heavy. When he looked at Felicity, she was already past asleep. God, you're so beautiful. He whispered before he positioned Felicity to be more comfortable. He even covered her legs with the coat he was wearing. Moments later, Lewis dozed off as well. 
The next day, when the employees started to arrive at the showroom, they were surprised to see Felicity and Lewis's current intimate position. They were really shocked, and they couldn't know how they can wake the couple up. When Felicity heard some mumbles, she woke up and saw her employees. Sorry, Miss Fanning, we don't know to wake you up, one of them said. Felicity sat properly before looking at Lewis, who was still sleeping. It's okay. She woke up Lewis. When he was already awake, Felicity smiled at him. We fell asleep, huh? I guess we did. Lewis chuckled before he stood up. Felicity stood up as well. I will just go home to change and come back. She looked at them. They all nodded and the couple went out already. You can leave your car at the parking and we can use mine. Let's have breakfast first before we go home. Where? If it's okay to you, the hospital's cafeteria. Felicity smiled before nodding. All right, all right. The couple drove off, and when they arrived at the hospital, Lewis held her hand and they walked towards the cafeteria. When they got there, everyone looked at their way. Lewis was holding her hand as Felicity looks at it. She couldn't help but to smile at their intertwined hands. Everybody notices and they started to gossip, but the couple didn't bother. Lewis was indeed very popular at the hospital because everyone at the cafeteria knows him, and he could hear them asking each other who was he with, or say they thought he was single or he's so lucky because it was Felicity fanning who he was dating. Felicity found an empty table and sat down there waiting for Lewis who was buying their food. When he was done, he took the tray and sat down to their table. The couple started eating when a doctor, Lewis's age, came to their direction. May I sit with you? He asked, Lewis. Lewis looked at Felicity for permission, and when she nodded her head, he let him be. Thanks, by the way. My name's Christopher, a neurologist. He looked at Felicity. Felicity smiled. I'm Felicity Fanning, CEO of Infinite Baby Essentials. Oh, nice to meet you, he said, before they shook hands. So how are you related to Lewis here? Felicity opened her mouth to answer, but she was stopped by Lewis. She's my wife? Your wife? When did you get married? Christopher was smirking. He doesn't believe it, Lewis, because he usually play jokes on everyone. That's why it's hard to believe something like this. Last two weeks ago. Lewis smiled, showing off his diamond wedding ring. Felicity's cheeks felt really warm at what he did. She felt really loved at that moment, and she couldn't help but to giggle. Christopher looked at her. Yes, we're married, Felicity said, confirming what Lewis just said. Confirming what Lewis just said. Wow, a huge bomb just dropped. Lewis playfully punched his shoulder, making him laugh. Congratulations. Thanks. The three of them started eating, and when they're finished, Felicity decided to go and visit Emma's father at his room. Are you sure you want to do this? Of course, Emma's father is part of my company, and it's normal to visit him. And besides, I'm already here, so I might as well pay him a visit before they go home tomorrow, right? Well, you have a point. Lewis chuckled before he took her hand and holding it tight. Every time Lewis does this, Felicity feels like there's a thousand bolts circulating her body. She's too affected every time Lewis holds her hand and it scares her. Even though Lewis is showing how he felt already, Felicity's still not confident about it. She needs his words. She needs him to tell her that he actually loves her. But Lewis still hasn't told her yet. While they were walking, Felicity looked at their intertwined hands before she looked up at Lewis, who was looking straight forward. He's going to take her to the room, but Felicity doesn't want him to come in with her. Still, he insisted that he needs to check on him, so Felicity didn't argue anymore. Why would she? Lewis is his doctor. We're here. Lewis announced before knocking on the door. Emma was the one who opened the door. Felicity was behind Lewis's back. That's why she didn't see her immediately. Why hello, Dr. Lewis? But instead of answering, Lewis took Felicity's hand, showing her. Felicity smiled as she saw Emma's frustrated reaction after seeing her. What are you doing here? She asked, annoyed. Felicity smiled. I'm here to visit your dad. Emma's looks falls to their intertwined hands and she couldn't help but to furrow her brows. She thought they broke up already because of what she saw. That night, Felicity was running away from Lewis with tears in her eyes. She thought they finally broke up after that, but now they're together and acting like a real couple. Lewis tried very hard not to burst her anger. Lewis was hinting on her. She was really sure of it. He was talking sweet things to her, encouraging her that everything will be okay and he'd do everything to help her father recover from the operation. He even touched her shoulder once and she was sure that they had connection after that. 
Lewis lets go of Felicity's hand and went to the patient to check on him while Felicity was just looking at them. I'll wait for you at the office. After here, we'll go home and change. Yes, I'll go straight to your clinic after here. Felicity smiled. Lewis nodded. He bid goodbye to Emma's father before Emma and then went outside. How are you feeling? I am pretty good now, Miss Fanning, all thanks to Dr. Lambert. My husband's really good at taking care, she joked. Emma's father laughed. Indeed, Mrs. Fanning, very hands-on. I will be reporting to the company next week. Oh no, you can extend your leave. Please take time to heal. Set aside your work. It can wait. Your health must be your priority. Thank you, Ms. Fanning. No worries. I'm the boss. It's my duty to look after my workers' health. After a little more while, Felicity bid her goodbyes. When she got out of the room, she didn't know Emma followed her behind. Emma harshly grabbed her arm, making her look at her. What is wrong with you? Emma shouted at her, but Felicity stayed calm. Excuse me? You should break up with Lewis. Your marriage is a fraud. Emma said angrily. Newsflash, little one. Lewis is my husband, and we are married, and it's a real thing. So if I were you, I would stop fantasizing someone else's husband. Oh, and see this. Felicity showed her ring. This is the reason why I mend things. It's because we are a married couple. She added before turning her back on her. Felicity could still hear Emma's constant shouting, but she felt relieved. She successfully protected her place next to Lewis. Felicity smiled, just thinking about it. When they got home, Frank was already there. He was smiling from ear to ear while Lewis was laughing at him. I'll leave you two to talk. Lewis went to their room. What do it feel, sissy? Did it went good? He wiggled his brows. Shut it, Frank. Felicity shook her head. But it did, huh? You were seen all lovey-dovey this morning. Felicity's ears felt hot. That's enough. I will assign you to the warehouse today. Frank's smiles turned into a frown. What? I have things to do today. Well, you better go to the warehouse now and do your thing if you want to do those things. Frank stood up harshly before going out of the couple's house. When Felicity heard his car drove off, she couldn't help but to smile. She won again. Her brother might be a pain in the end at times, but she was happy he did it last night. As far as it goes, Frank's prank last night was the best so far. Frank went to the warehouse and started checking the boxes that had arrived when his phone rang. Bella, Bella, where are you? We need to practice. Frank sighed. I played a little prank on my sister and she got angry. I'm at the warehouse now. That's sad. How about tomorrow? I don't know. This warehouse is huge, and I have to check on the boxes that has arrived. He sighed. He sighed. You suck. You suck. Bella chuckled. I do, anyways. I will find another way to get out of here soon, and we'll make it up to you. So, so, just call me if you get out of there. Bella said before ending the call. After the couple changed, Lewis drove Felicity to work. He dropped her for her company, and after he bid goodbye, he drove off. Felicity then went directly to the showroom where everyone's already busy doing their tasks. A few more hours to go, and the event will start. Ella, could you please get this for me? Lee asked Ella, giving her a post-it note. She looked at it, and it was addressed at the nearby restaurant. I'm just gonna get this right. Yes, I have to go to Miss Fanning to give the papers. That's why I can't go to the restaurant. Ella stood up. All right, I'll go. She said before getting her bag. Really. Yes, I'm a little bit hungry myself. Bella shrugged. All right, thank you so much. After that, Lee leaves her. He went to Felicity's office because he needs to endorse some papers to her for the event later that afternoon. Bella went out of the building and into the restaurant. The line at the cashier was pretty long, but she doesn't mind. She's not wearing heels anymore. She was wearing skinny jeans and sneakers, her usual clothes. Clark, how are you? She asked after answering Clark's call. Dressed. Our manager doesn't want me to quit. He sighed. He sighed. That sucks. I'm pretty lucky, though. She chuckled. Yes, you are, because you've already escaped this hell. Ella chuckled. Sooner or later, I'm sure you'll get out of there. Clark huffed at the other line. Even. So, I can't get out of here. I don't have anywhere else to go. Nonsense. You're a very talented cameraman and a video editor. I hope so. Anyways... I heard from manager that you have a huge scoop. Can you give it to me? I really need one. 
Ella bit her lip. The scoop was about Felicity. Ooh, oh, about that. I lost the flash drive and recording pen. I lost it somewhere already. Oh, I see anyways. Sorry for disturbing you. No worries, Clark. See you when I see you, she said before Clark ended the call. Ella was almost at the cashier when she saw a familiar face coming into the restaurant. It was Finn, he was wearing a black tux and he was really handsome. When Ella got her orders, she took a glance at him again and saw that he was talking with someone on the phone at the aisle. She even saw the waiter coming in his way with a tray of water, a news flash. The waiter wasn't looking at where he was walking. Ella immediately ran to where Finn was and pulled him out of the way. She saved him from getting wet because of the waiter. I am very sorry. The waiter apologizes to Finn. It's okay, I'm all right. No need to be bothered. When he looked at where Ella used to be, she's not there anymore. Finn furrowed his brows, looking at the whole restaurant, but he couldn't find him. He muttered to himself, thinking Ella was a little weird. Ella went back to the company after pulling Finn. She immediately ran because she was too shy to face him. She gave Lee the paper bag of food. Great, thank you, Ella. No worries. She smiled. Why don't we eat lunch together? Ella looked at her watch, and indeed it was already lunch break. Sure, why not? She smiled. There are three of them, Lee, her and other colleague from their department. They all decided to eat at the cafeteria. When they got there, the cafeteria was almost full of people, but luckily, Lee saw an empty table at the center part. They all sat down and opened their food. Ella got herself a chicken from the same restaurant. Lee bought his pasta. The three of them started talking when she saw Finn again. He was sitting at a table near the window with some unfamiliar people. Ella kept looking at his direction when Lee noticed it. I see your growing interest with Finn. Ella looked at him. No, I'm not. I was just a little curious, that's all. Curious about what? Their colleague asked. Ella thought about it. Yeah, what am I curious about him? She asked herself. I told you it's no good news, Ellie. I hope you're listening. I know, you don't have to worry. It's just, he's a little bit mysterious and it really suits him. She shrugged before munching on her food. And handsome? T- yeah. Ella absentmindedly answered, which made their other colleague laugh and Lee shook his head. 